Saxon Algebra 1, Lesson 112. We're going to talk a little bit more on multiplying radicals. Yes, those radicals, the ones that sit on the university granite steps with their bullhorns and call out to the crowd that it's time to stop the war. Those radicals, only a different kind of problem. Um, we know how to multiply binomials, right? We know that what we do is we stack them, right? We bring this down over here. We don't need that anymore. We go like this and then they go to the dance, right? And we multiply here plus three X. Oh, I forgot to write the squared. X times X is X squared. X times three is three X. She sits down, this girl stands up. Minus X minus three is her multiplications. And then we add together for our answer, right? This is multiplying binomials. Multiplying, sorry. And we've done a little bit in multiplying radicals. We've done stuff like this, where we're just more or less distributing, right? We go like this, and we say that is five times the square root of three plus square root of 36, right? Three times 12 is 36. But this we know is six times six, so we have a pair of pigs that we can bring out and so we know that this is five times the square root of three plus six as our final answer for this. Let me just box these because it makes me feel better. That's the right answer. Okay, so what we're gonna do is, sometimes the eyes go a little wonky. Um, what we're gonna do is mash these two ideas up and multiply binomials that have radicals in them. What? I was enjoying lesson 111 so much that I tried to cheat and make this 111, but it's over. I'm sorry, it's sad. Multiply, says our instruction. And I'm gonna write it the way it is in the book, just to remind you, John always writes it like this. Right, which is how we sometimes saw those. We know that we don't wanna do it this way. There's a way to multiply them like this. It's called the FOIL method. I don't wanna talk about it. It makes my head hurt just a little bit. It works, but I don't enjoy it. Stacking the two binomials and taking them to the dance is by far the better way to go. So let's do that. Three plus square root of eight. Okay, now we can cross that out because we've rewritten it underneath where we want it. Parentheses or no parentheses, it doesn't matter. We're not gonna use them for this particular technique, um, but it's fine if they're there. Okay, so we go to the dance. We start over here. This girl is gonna dance with two. We multiply, remember, we don't add, we're multiplying. So that's six plus three times the square root of two. She's done, sit down, over to her. And now here we get plus, now we're gonna get a different number inside of our radical. So I'm gonna add it separately or I'm gonna put it in this line separately, right? I'm not gonna combine it with anything because there's nothing else that has a square root of eight. But when I get to this, well, I'll just write it out. And then these two, my, my brain wants to take shortcuts and I'll explain them to you ahead of time, later that you can make ahead of time if you want. Okay, so I've multiplied my four, each girl has gotten to dance with two guys, so that's four different dancing scenarios. It looks like they're all completely different. But if we go through and simplify where we can, we quickly see that that's not true. They actually are gonna mash up. I'm gonna look at this. I'm gonna kind of make some notes going up this way. Eight can be broken out into four times two. And four can be broken out into two times two, right? I'm making a prime factor tree going sideways. So I see I can pull a pair of twos out of here Two on the inside is one on the outside, so this is gonna be times two. And I'm gonna have one of those twos, because I've got three of them here. I'm gonna have one left inside. So I'm gonna rewrite this as four times the square root of two. 
That's the simplified version of that, right? We pulled the pair of twos out, multiplied it as one against that. Now I can see, oh look, these guys match. If you are whipped into shape on simplifying radicals in your head, you might have seen this coming. If your brain doesn't see it coming, that's fine. You'll get faster and stronger as you go. But if you see it coming, then you can simplify in your head as you multiply, and then we could have combined those here. Ditto for this. Actually, this one's even easier. When we look at square root of 16, well, I just know that 16 equals 4 squared. We don't even have to prime factor it. So I know that this can be rewritten as 4, and then that and this guy go together. So if you can simplify in your head as you are multiplying, or just after you finish your multiplying, then you can combine them more neatly. But it's fine to just write them all out and then simplify later and see what matches. Okay, so now for the final step, I'm gonna combine the whole numbers and get 10. And I'm gonna combine these. Remember when we add these, it's just like if we have 3x and 4x. Um, once the square root of twos match, we just add the whole numbers in front. The square root of two part doesn't change. We just have, it's like saying we have three nickels and four nickels. We add them together and we have seven nickels. I don't know if that helps you, but it helps me. So, you know, that's all I can do. Okay, so there we have a nice little answer. Ready? There are four problems in this lesson. I personally am planning to enjoy everyone. My camera was kind of wonky. I was showing you the chair. Okay, that's better. All right, example, 112.2, multiply. The instructions all just say to multiply. John gives us that side-by-side -side presentation. I'm not gonna copy it that way anymore. Cause you know, why? Four plus square root of five, two minus two times the square root of five. Okay, this one's a little different in that we have a number in front of the square root as we multiply. That's not hard. I'll remind you how to do that. Okay, we're multiplying. We start with him, her, and we multiply up, eight. Two times four is eight. We go this way. Well, that's easy. It's just two square root of five, right? Two times the square root of five is two square root of five. Sounds like I'm saying nothing. Maybe I'm not. Maybe I am saying nothing. Oh, sorry. Don't worry, I'm not bored. Um, we're multiplying this by this. We're gonna get minus eight square root of five. That can go with this. Okay, that matches. Now we're gonna multiply up minus two square root of five times square root of five. Okay, it's gonna be minus, the two fives are gonna to come together to be a pair of fives as pigs, so one's gonna jump out. It's gonna multiply by this. It's gonna be a minus, it's minus 10, okay? If that's too much for your brain, and you'd rather go, okay, it's minus two, 25, then over here, split this out, five by five. A pair of pigs in the house is worth one outside of the house. Five times minus two is minus 10. That is absolutely fine. There is no shame in that game. But I also wanted to illustrate for you how you can think it through in your head. Okay, eight minus 10, minus two. And again, once we see that these match, we just focus on these. 2 minus 8, that would be minus 6, square root of 5. That's right. Okay, so this is slightly more complicated. Ever so slightly. Example 112.3. Here's another one. 2 plus square root of 2. 3 plus 2 times square root of 2. Sometimes I leave a space in between. Other times I just smush them up against each other. Please give yourself enough space to make your brain feel good. If something's hard or confusing, even in the beginning, or if you just feel like, oh, this is a lot, giving yourself more space just gives your brain uh, a calmer field to work in. So use that to your advantage. Um, I know that in Algebra 1, a lot of students are still keen on the idea of really squeezing their problems together and using every bit of white space. 
please, if you haven't already, break yourself of that habit. As our problems get more complex, the more we need the white space and the, the margin, not only for you as you're figuring out, but when other people go to look at your work, it's too hard to try to figure out what you're doing. If it's all squeezed together into a solid chunk of pencil, it really makes a difference if it's neat and um, has room to breathe. That's the way I always think of it. So think about your presentations. I wish we were together because right now what I would ask you to do is pull out your homework and show me how your homework looks. And then I would talk about what I think. Maybe I'll ask you to send me just a random picture of any of your homework pages so I can take a look at how that's going. Oh, COVID, you make this harder on us. All right, let's multiply this. Three times two is six. Three times that is those two things squished together. This times this is four square root of two. That matches, so I can go like this. And now this is gonna be two times, this will be square root of four. Square root of four is two. The two comes out, it multiplies by that. So I'm gonna go plus four right there, All right? If I did it the long way, I'd say it's plus two times the square root of four, which equals two times two, because the square root of four is equal to two. That's another way I could show it. Okay, but I'm not doing that. I'm doing this and I get 10 plus seven square root of two. That's the right answer. One more, are you ready? Um, I'm gonna write down this problem because the problem looks like it's harder, but it's not. Ready? I hated this so much when I was a student. When you're rolling along, you're doing your homework, you're like, okay, this is fine, I get this. And then a big fat curveball comes floating across the plate. You go, why? Why does this one look so weird? What am I supposed to do? I don't even know. Why did you have to go and make it harder on me? Well, here's the thing. When we put parentheses around something and we say to square it, that just means multiply it by itself, right? So what this is our cue to say, oh, we're just gonna multiply it by itself, right? Just like x squared could be like that, right? This would just be x squared. Wouldn't that be fun if that was all we were doing? So don't let the, the squaring presentation fool you. It just means multiply it by itself. And the parentheses show you what part needs to be multiplied by itself. Oh, excuse me. I'm yawning. Um, okay, the other one that's thing that's weird about this one is it's got X's and Y's in it. Well, guess what? Multiplying letters is easier than multiplying numbers because we don't even have to think. So we're not gonna let that bother us. This times this. Okay, the twos come together. Two inside a pig house equals one on the outside. So that's gonna be two x squared, right? X times x is x squared. Now we go this way and that's gonna be, okay, the two pigs multiply. So that's six x y. Notice the letters are not in the pig house, they're outside. Okay, so this is square root of six x y. Now we go this y way, ooh, I can't talk. Square root of six x y. And now this, this is gonna be square root of nine, or we can see right away, it's two matching pigs inside, so we'll bring one out, and then it's y squared. All right. That was the multiplying, that was okay. Now we're gonna add, 